Hey guys, it's your Peacekeeper coming at you with the next video in our How to Play series on the Royal Navy Cruiser Line. This is the Tier 9 Neptune class of light cruisers. The Neptune class of light cruisers is not a real ship, it's a paper ship. And it is based on, in this game at least, the 1944 cruiser design studies. And this is Design Y. Design Y was intended to be twice as large as the Crown Colony class cruisers like the Fiji and incorporate the new dual purpose 6 inch gun mounts that would allow them to be used for any aircraft. These ships would also make extensive use of radar fire control to allow for better accuracy and first shot hits as well as improve the anti aircraft suite. They also used a heavier 6-inch shell than the previous iterations of the light cruisers for the Royal Navy, and this would help improve penetration at long distances. They would also carry more armor, predominantly in the deck, in addition to better compartmentalization for improved survivability. As none of these ships actually existed, there's no real service history for them, so we're going to dive right on into the in-game how these ships play. This is a return to the euphoria of the Fiji class, and I, I, I can't stress how much fun this ship really is. And while the Edinburgh wasn't a huge improvement over the preceding uh, Fiji, this ship is definitely a strong improvement over Edinburgh. And her only real downside is the fact that she's very easy to citadel, she's very soft, in fact... If you get in a fight with a tier 10 cruiser like, say, the Hindenburg, you really have to pay attention to your angling to make the most use of your armor belt. If you don't, you can see you don't exactly have a whole lot of, of plating here to bounce shots. So you really, really have to be careful of your angling when you're facing up against other cruisers. However, that said, this thing has enough rate of fire and enough armor penetration at pretty much all ranges to just absolutely wipe the floor with some of those ships. So don't feel like this ship is really only intended to sit and smoke and plink at those ships. You certainly can do that. However, I would strongly encourage being a little bit more aggressive with them. Unlike the Edinburgh, though, this ship does have a usable torpedo armament. So when you do get up close and personal... Those torpedoes are a serious threat, and we'll cover more of that as we go into the stats. The smoke bug still persists with Neptune. I brought it up in the Edinburgh video. It definitely persists with Neptune, and, and, and from what I've been told, it also exists with Minotaur. And I've also been told that it exists for all of the Royal Navy cruisers. As of today, January 8th, 2017, I have received a response from Wargaming saying that they are going to take the video that I made and they are going to show it to the devs when they come back from their, their celebration of Christmas in Russia. And they are going to see if this behavior is actually intended. How this doesn't come back as being unintended, I honestly don't know. Stay tuned, I'll keep you guys up to date as more information comes in. So Let's dive on into those stats. We got 44,900 hit points, and I already showed the armor a little bit, but you can see here we do actually have a belt. It does exist, and it does cover more of the ship. However, the upper portions of the ship are still really, really soft. So while you do have armor, it's not exactly, you know, it's nothing to really write home about. You can bounce shells, but you got to make sure that you're angled just right to make the best use of the armor on the ship. The main battery does consist of 12 6-inch guns. They are mounted in four turrets with three guns per turret. They are 2-4, two, 2 aft. They have a main battery firing range of 16.5 kilometers. The secondary armament consists of six of these dual 114 millimeter guns. There they are. And they have a firing range of 6.3 kilometers with basic firing training, advanced firing training. No other secondary module. So that's that's pretty good for our secondaries on a cruiser, actually. So that really helps lend credence to the idea that these ships were actually intended to be up close and personal fighters. The 
Ship does also have torpedoes. There are 16 of them and four quad launchers. You got eight on each side, eight torpedoes on each side, and, and two quad launchers on each side. They do have 10 kilometer range and 62 knot top speed. The anti-aircraft suite on this is absolutely impressive. This is one of the many ships that have power creep the U.S. Navy ships out of the title of anti-aircraft queens and kings. And... Well, let's just go over it. So there is 14 of the dual 20 millimeter Orlikans. There are 10 of the dual 40 millimeter Stag anti-aircraft guns. That's what they look like there. Those almost look like Bofors mounted in a special mount. I'm guessing that's what those are. Obviously, those 114 millimeter guns that are part of your secondaries, those are also part of your anti-aircraft suite, and you do have six dual mounts, three on each side. And then we have our main armament, those six-inch guns, all 12 of them, also count as part of your anti-aircraft suite. And your anti-aircraft bubble starts at 7.2 kilometers and steps down gradually to the 2.4 kilometers of the Orlikans. Your max speed is 33 and a half knots. That's without the speed flag. As I say that now, I'm wondering if I actually... Yeah, without the speed flag. And the turning circle is 710 meters with the rudder shift time of 5.2 seconds. That 5.2 seconds comes with the caveat that is with both steering gears mod 2 and steering gears mod 3. The detection range by other ships is 11.2 kilometers, and the detection range by air is 8 kilometers. So those are the stats. Let's dive on into those upgrades, because we do actually have a new upgrade slot for Tier 9. Main Armaments Mod 1, still the standard. Aiming Systems Mod 1, still the standard. And the new one, Main Battery Mod 3. We're going to reduce our reload time, so increase our rate of fire at the expense of slowing our turret traverse down. These ships definitely have quick enough turret traverse that I'm not too worried about it, especially since we also have expert marksmen thrown in on this captain just to kind of help offset that loss. And the extra rate of fire really helps put out quite a lot of DPM. The reload time is 4.4 seconds compared to the 6.5, I think it was, for Edinburgh. So definitely a big step up in, in rate of fire and definitely worth getting that module. The other one that I see a lot of people will end up taking is going to be AA Guns Mod 3, which increases the DPS of your anti-aircraft mounts by 25%. The other also viable option for those of you who are a little more cautious about your ship, you can take the Gun Fire Control Systems Mod 2 for the increase in range. That would increase your main battery firing range by 16%. I don't know what that number is off the top of my head, but that's a lot of range. And I don't know that those shells really are doing a whole lot of damage once you get there. So I personally don't see that as being nearly as viable of an option as some of these other ones. Torpedo Tubes Mod 3, if you're somebody who wants to abuse the ever-living crap out of your torpedo tubes, I guess this would be an option for you. Personally, I think the Rate of Fire module is far more impressive and far more useful for far more options. But those torpedoes are 10k, and you do get to single launch them. And then, of course, the last one is Secondary Battery Mod 3. I definitely don't recommend that for this ship, in spite of its rather impressive secondaries for a cruiser. I, it just... The reduction in your, your secondaries reload time isn't going to add enough DPS. You're not going to spend enough time in range of your secondaries to actually make those work. So I definitely recommend ma the main battery mod 3 for the you know faster rate of fire. And then, of course, propulsions mod 1 to reduce the chances of us losing our engine. Steering gears mod 2 to reduce the rudder shift time by 20%. And then steering gears mod 3 to reduce it by an additional 40%, as well as improve how quickly the steering gears repair so that's kind of how this ship is you know it, it continues that that long line of, of royal navy play style where it plays like an overgrown destroyer with good torpedoes and absolutely destructive ap and rather than me continue to blab about it let's dive on into the video so that you guys can see what i'm talking about 
This battle is a 168,000 damage battle in the Neptune. It is a tier 9 fight that takes place on Estuary. That's the name of the map. And there's a fairly large contingent of battleships on both teams. You can see the Iowa, North Carolina, North Carolina, Turpit, Scharnhorst. And then we've got a whole bunch of really soft cruisers on their team. Ibuki, Mogami, Shores. There was a Pensacola. We're not going to run into the Pensacola. We will see the Mogami get nearly deleted towards the end. But for the most part, this match really exemplifies some of the, the strengths and flexibility of, of the Neptune. And the reasons why I choose the rudder shift module over, say, the module for concealment. And for a number of people, that concealment module is actually going to be the preferred module. I, I get it. I, I'm not saying you're wrong. It's a playstyle choice difference. And for me, I much prefer to have the increase in rudder shift, or sorry, decrease in rudder shift time, rather, the increase in mobility of that rudder shift module. Now on this map, you know, <laughs> the the best strategy for this map, especially with Neptune, you know, we've got a lot of hard cover. So this first part of this, we're going to we're going to hijack this island that's straight ahead of us and we're going to use it for cover until targets start getting a little bit more thin and then we're going to break out and use our smoke. Of course, before we get into all of that, we got to do some shameless promotion of the YouTube channel, and this battle is definitely a good recommendation for those people to join. So if any of you guys are in this battle and you join, throw it down in the comments. I'm curious to see if any of you guys uh, subscribe to the channel after after this battle. Anyway, the the Neptune's shell arcs, you know, the, like all the Royal Navy cruisers, they are kind of lofty, but at the end of the day... They're more than workable, and at the ranges we're going to predominantly be hanging out at, which is that uh, right around 12k range, it's actually quite powerful. Now, a large part of that 168,000 damage isn't the gunplay, but I get a lot of really good torpedo hits, and we'll, we'll see that here in a minute. So we're going to hang out here by this island. We're going to wait for this battleship that's behind us to catch up. We have a friendly, I want to say it's a Shores, that is also right here with us. He's also going to sit here and wait. Without any real spotting, without any battleship support, going into this cap would have ended poorly. And it's going to take a little bit to, for that to, to develop in the game uh, so that you guys can see it. But ultimately, you know, this map, if you don't have a team that is willing to split itself to go to both A and D... It is very difficult to do well on this map, especially with the four capture points, because let, let's face it, those four capture points, you know, you, you have to have at least two to offset their points, and then you got to kill everything. Having three is definitely preferred. And if you're unwilling to split, you had better move very quickly and steamroll whatever side it is you're pushing. We finally have a Turpitz and a Sharnhor show up, and that's that's what I was getting at. We definitely did not want to get into an engagement with those two battleships by ourselves. There's also a North Carolina. You couldn't see it was North Carolina. You'll see it in a minute when he pops back up. But that's a North Carolina that's back there. No, oh, it's an Iowa. All right. I thought it was North Carolina. Somewhere in here is a North Carolina as well. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to use this island as, as hard cover. Now, I... The Sharnhorst is going to start shooting at me, and you're going to see those shells. You see the black clouds, and then you see them hit the, the island. Uh, see, there was a North Carolina. So there's an Iowa and a North Carolina over there. We're going to poke our heads out here. We're going to go ahead and pop our smoke. We're going 19 knots, so we're good to deploy it. There is a Miyoko there. We do need to be cautious of, of it. That salvo could have been better aimed. We are going to go ahead and we are going to launch a whole spread of torpedoes here. You noticed I launched most of those short. My anticipation is for that North Carolina, which is predominantly one of them bow tanking style of ships, to turn in. And this is why we don't go broadside to anything. <laughs> Two Citadel hits and, and down goes the Miyoko. Anyway, the reason why I launched those short is because at North Carolina, I'm anticipating him to turn into our battleship here, which he does. 
And had this Miyoko not died there, there's a good possibility I would have gotten at least one torpedo hit on him. And also, I think it was the Miyoko spotting plane also kind of keyed him into the fact that those torpedoes were there. So we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll keep harassing him with gunfire. You can see that they have one cap to R1 cap. We, sorry, they have two caps to R1 cap. We are currently contesting that one other cap. They are in this cap and we're kind of waiting for a little bit more support to come from mid, but this North Carolina, you know, I bailed out of the smoke kind of early, and that's because I saw this Iowa coming up on the other side, and I didn't want to be in a position where he could really punish me. But, I do want to emphasize the but here, had I had, had this Iowa not been there, I could have stayed in that smoke for another 30 seconds and really pounded that broadside North Carolina. U.S. battleships, you know, that all-or-nothing armor scheme, the relatively thin weather decking, all of that stuff plays against them when it comes to these six-inch cruisers. They, they just eat normal penetrates, normal penetrations so fast. I mean, there was 4K in one salvo to an Iowa. Now we're falling behind because he's managed to speed up, but you'll start to see the damage counter tick up a little bit. And there was another 3K from that last one. So we... We've got a number of targets to shoot at here. We got a, a Shores, which, you know, Russian cruiser, very annoying. I, I, ugh. Anyway, Mogami, very, very squishy. He's sailing in straight lines and broadside. 10 out of 10, do not recommend this. Yeah, he, he punished by our, by our, our ships here. Our first salvo, he bounces a whole bunch of them. Well, that's kind of unfortunate. He's not gonna bounce too much more though. And you can see the damage numbers just tick, 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 tick. There's a Citadel hit for four, over 4K. So you can see that the, the damage on these ships adds up really quick. You know, we're, here we are, we're six minutes into a match and 60,000 damage. So 10,000 damage a minute in, 20, in a 20 minute match, that would be about 200,000 damage, which that's a really good game. Unfortunately, that pace obviously isn't going to hold up for too much longer. So, we're, we're going to go ahead. We're going to we're going to press the advantage that we've got now. We've got battleship support. We've got destroyer support. I'm in a cruiser, and the two cruisers that are here, I am not worried about. What you saw there was me attempting to hit my hydro with this Mogami behind the island. I didn't want to lose sight of him and end up broadside to him and end up taking a you know a full salvo of of bad news. And I accidentally hit the smoke in the process. Kind of sucks, but, you know, well, we just got to play smarter while it's down. Also, you can see there I'm using the torpedo arcs to determine what, which direction that Mogami is going. I can't tell if he's backing up going forward or what. He dodged incoming fire from a turpits there. We definitely don't want to give our broadside to the shores. He's going to continue to shoot HE at us, which is really annoying, but really not that effective. And because he is sailing slightly broadside and we just disappeared. So there, we've used our stealth to go ahead and disappear from him. Now, since he's lost track of me and there's an island between us, I can really push the advantage on him and get closer. And this is one of the areas in which the Royal Navy cruisers just kick absolute butt in, is the ability to sneak in to these situations and then surprise here I am with a whole bunch of really powerful six inch gunfire. So he becomes detected and we're going to pop off some salvos here. We're also going to turn the other way. And the reason we're turning the other way is I have no idea what those other two battleships are doing and there one of them gets spotted. We're going to shift our focus now because battleship we are going to torp spam and again we are launching torpedoes at the indicator and away from the, you know, shallow because my anticipation is for him to turn in to avoid any incoming fire in. What actually happens is he doesn't turn in. Yeah, so Shores, Broadside, 6 inches, AP, 4 Citadels for 11,000 damage in one salvo. And here's the reason why you don't sail on straight lines of the battleship. Dunk, dunk, dunk. You're gonna get there's the three torpedoes. <laughs> Just we're gonna go ahead and lop off huge chunks of, of HP off this Iowa. Now me, really, what I was thinking at this point was, is crap. I'm dead. I need something to take over. Oh, 
we've got Niowa here to take over the focus. We're ducking and weaving. You can see we're abusing the heck out of that, those WAS and D keys to try and minimize as much damage as we're taking. Thankfully, uh, Fletcher and Iowa make themselves a much more prominent target. That Fletcher, I don't know if those guys were in a division. I'd have to look at the beginning again. But that Fletcher providing smoke there for that Iowa, just absolute huge benefit to that to the to our Iowa. And unfortunately, I'm going to run into an island. Yay! Well, since we're going to do that, we're going to pop smoke because we are now stationary. And it's very, very easy for them to do a lot of damage to us. Our Iowa unfortunately gets rammed by their Iowa, fortunately survives the encounter. This Turpitz is in range, so we will go ahead and we will hit him. Now, German battleships suffer from the same problem that U.S. battleships do. Their decking is thin enough that any hits to the deck and that superstructure is going to do a lot of damage. Of course, they have the added advantage of not being able to really be citadel. They can, but the situations in which a battleship can citadel them is very, 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 very difficult. And the situations there, are, they're very rare. They don't happen very often. And obviously in a six inch gun cruiser, we aren't going to be citadeling it at all. So we're gonna, we're gonna drop again, again, a torp load. We've got three torpedo hits already. We could have had four if that North Carolina hadn't spotted those torp torpedoes that I launched earlier because of the scouting plane. We've captured this point, so we now have three of the five, or sorry, three of the four points. This Turpitz is turning out. He's turning out and he's shooting an HE at me in smoke. He can't see me and yeah, well short there, buddy. But thanks for turning out because had you not turned out, you know, probably wouldn't be getting this torpedo hit. You can see the damage rolls just add up. And the, the, again, going back to that, that the German battleships, their, their superstructure, there's a torpedo hit. Their superstructures are really, really quite soft. The trade-off for that for them was that they can't really be citadel. And so we're just going to sit here and we're going to just take up the damage rolls. There's 1,500. There's another 1,500. You know, 1,500, that's not a huge number, but it is consistent, it is reliable. That's only 1,000. Torpedoes still aren't up yet. There's another 2,000. We are adding damage, and that's good. Now, now that he's opening up his profile to us, he's going to start taking more damage. And it adds up quick enough, and we get the kill. So, the... The rate of fire on these ships is such that it really helps. Unfortunately, we got to watch our Colorado eat a torpedo. That's painful, but he's going to survive the fight. And you, you can see that the damage rolls, they add up. And it's that rate of fire that really helps these things out. Because if you actually do the end of battle analysis, we got 300 shell hits and 157,000 damage. And if you do the math, you know that that's uh, not terribly impressive per shell damage. That's really not impressive. That's about 500... Yeah, that's about 500 damage per shell. So not a huge amount of damage per shell. And that's, you know, that's offset by the fact that the rate of fire on these things is up there. Four and a half seconds on a six-inch gun cruiser is pretty good. That's faster than some destroyers. Japanese destroyers. There's a big hit on that Ibuki that's from the North Carolina. The unfortunate part about that North Carolina is coming up, though. We congratulate him. He's full health. And this Ibuki, we're gonna we're gonna get ourselves in a position to take him out because, well, he's he's heavily damaged. Oh, look who's back! Our friend the Shores. All right. Well, let's get our we're gonna get our get a couple shots popped off on him. The Ibuki goes down. You can see the torpedoes heading to that North Carolina. We get no damage on the shores. What? 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 You've got to be kidding me, man. I mean, I, let, let's just... I don't know the best way to put this, but... I... <laughs> If you're going to sail in a straight line long enough that you're going to eat torpedoes from a cruiser, you probably deserve to eat those torpedoes. And that's exactly what happened to Fast Tracks there. And 
by the time you reach tier eight, you know which cruisers have have torpedoes. You know that the Japanese cruisers especially have torpedoes. Anyway, you can see we popped Hydro a little bit further back. I didn't want that Shores coming around the, the side of the island here to ambush me. He does have torpedoes, if I remember correctly. If he doesn't have torpedoes, then whatever. You know, it, it helps to see him around that island. We're going to launch torpedoes. Honestly, I, I, this is really quite overkill, especially given what he's got to do. And it's more or less just an assurance thing. You can see we're just we're piling on damage, thousand at a time, thousand at a time. Then he turns broadside. Don't turn broadside to cruiser shooting AP. And he shoots AP at us. It doesn't help him. We sink him with another Citadel hit. 168,000 damage. 168, 240. Only two sinks, but we got Confederate and High Caliber. 2,282 base XP. There's the damage screen. 40,000 of my damage was in torpedo, so 127 in, in the in the gunplay. Anyway, I, I do enjoy this ship a lot. This is a very good ship, and the Neptune, in spite of its softness to incoming battleship fire, is a lot of fun to play. And it returns back to the, the good times playing the Royal Navy cruisers like at the Fiji. Anyway, I'm your peacekeeper. You guys know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe, and thank you for watching.